One of the things that I'm noticing is that whenever it comes to a conversation about war, almost nobody keeps it real. And a lot of that has to do with people being considerate of the feelings of our soldiers. But I think it's incumbent upon honest people to tell the truth no matter what, no matter whose feelings it might hurt. So I'm going to do that. Listen to what former Defense Secretary Robert Gates said earlier today on Morning Joe. Um, like I say, I think the troops um, knew the score and, and the troops I believed in the mission and the troops believed and believe that they were being successful in their mission. And so they, I think they were able to a certain extent to set aside uh, the politics here at home. Although I make the point in the book, when you have somebody like the Senate Majority Leader come out in the middle of the surge and say this war is lost, I thought that was one of the most disgraceful things that I'd heard a politician say. That is, that sends uh, a riveting message to kids who are putting their lives on the line every day that they're doing it for nothing. And that was absolutely not the case. Mm. Mrs. I think what's disgraceful is you lying to them and saying the war isn't lost. What is victory? What was victory in Iraq? How do you define victory in Iraq? How can you possibly do that? Let me give you a little rundown here. Let me refresh your memory as to what happened in the lead up to the Iraq war. So first, the claim was Saddam Hussein worked with Al-Qaeda and was responsible for 9-11. That was total and utter bullshit. It is factually incorrect. It is wrong. It is false. Okay, how much clearer can I be? So that was the reason why we invaded. That's, uh, you know, all the brave men and women who are part of our military that went over there went there under that assumption. Wasn't, wasn't the case. Okay, then they moved the goalposts to he has uh, weapons of mass destruction. Well, first of all, even if he did have weapons of mass destruction, is your assumption that he's really just going to press the button right away? That, oh, yeah, he's going to attack Sacramento on Tuesday. No, you're making that up. Even if he did have them, he wasn't going to launch them against the U.S. I mean, look, Saddam Hussein was a really bad guy, but he wasn't suicidal. You think he doesn't realize that his ass would have been blown off the fucking map if he launched at us? Uh, but see, people don't think through these things. They just accept the propaganda from the government and the lapdog media, and that's it. That, you know, that, that's all there is to it, and Gates is a perfect example of this. And then they move the goalposts again a second time to, well, yeah, no WMDs, he wasn't connected to Al-Qaeda or 9-11, but he's just a bad guy. Oh, is that so? Uh, well, then I guess by that standard, by that logic, we have to go topple every single bad guy in the world, which would mean there'd be roughly six countries left that we don't invade. And by the way, we are allies with many bad guys, with many brutal dictators who kill their own people. But we conveniently don't, uh, you know, go after them. We only go after the ones that, oh, shocking, they seem to have oil in their region, and we seem to want control of that region because it's a vital area of the Middle East. Well, it's, it's funny how that worked out. So I think the disgraceful thing, to say Harry Reid was disgraceful for saying the war is lost and we should get out of there, no, 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 no. How can you possibly spin the situation to try to say that the guy who's trying to save our soldiers' lives is the disgraceful one? No, the disgraceful people are the ones that sent us in there in the first place. All of the neoconservatives, Dick Cheney, Bill Kristol, Richard Pearl, Paul Wolfowitz, George W. Bush, all of them, you know, I, uh, I'm, you know, an agnostic atheist, so I don't believe in a heaven or a hell, but sometimes I wish a hell existed just so that these guys can go there. All of the American soldiers, the brave young men and women that died in service of their country for nothing, all, the 100,000 Iraqi civilians who died for nothing. The destabilizing of the region. Now, because of the war on terror, we have increased recruitment to Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. We have made the problem worse. The war on terror has made terrorism worse. But this guy's gonna sit there and say it's disgraceful that one of the few guys who was trying to get the soldiers out uh, said something that made him feel slightly uncomfortable. I'm sorry, man, but 
Look, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if you're a fucking general or if you're a colonel or if you're the president or if you're former defense secretary Robert Gates. I don't do with these dumbass fucking, you know, pathetic excuses for reporters and journalists do where they bow down at the altar of of Robert Gates. Oh, you must be right about everything because you were in the establishment, the esteemed Robert Gates. Bullshit. Okay? This guy's not right about everything. It doesn't mean that he analyzed the situation properly. It doesn't mean that uh, oftentimes he probably tells falsehoods. I mean, look, man, it, it's very simple. The way to really uh, support the troops is to never send them into harm's way unless you absolutely have to. It's not that difficult. It's not that hard to figure out. 